Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, good that you are joining in uh, in this session where we talk about the Believer's Authority. Let's pray, and we will uh, get started. So I request somebody, yeah, please pray. Heavenly Father, thank you very much for guiding us here for 19th class, Heavenly Father. Please quietly in this class, Heavenly Father, and um, help us to learn about your word, Heavenly Father. Help us to gain your understanding about your word, Heavenly Father. And uh, thank you once again for gathering us here for this class, Heavenly Father. Please mightly, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So in the last class, we talked about um, some defense defensive uh, ways in which we can uh, exercise our authority and dominion and we also talked about um, some ways in which we can take the initiative to attack you know or, or counter the attacks of the enemy and it's a very important uh, class which we had i know that our on campus students were away you were on a mission trip, but uh, please do go back to the recording because it's really important. So in that we covered in the defense, we said that when we are positioned in intimacy with God, as Psalm 91 says, we are automatically protected, isn't it? Uh, or when, say, we are doing what God has called us to do. For example, we said how God called Adam and Eve to take care of the garden. That was their responsibility. So in submission to God was their protection. When they went away from God, when they did their own thing, they came out of protection. So that's how we can defend ourselves. You keep yourself in that place of obedience, submission to God, automatically you're protected you know, to a large extent. So uh, that's how one should be. We also said the example of Job. It says that Job, uh, he was very conscious about doing the right thing uh, for God. So he had a life of devotion. He was giving offerings and all. And that made a hedge of protection. So even when Satan goes to ask God um, uh, regarding Job, Satan says, you already you put a hedge around him. How did the hedge come? Just a life of obedience, a life of devotion towards God. It protects us. We don't come under uh, the attack of the devil. So just being in that right place uh, can help us resist the devil. But even otherwise, we looked at so many different uh, terms such as give no place to the devil, withstand the devil, stand against the devil, right? So all these things uh, are something that a believer must do. We have to stop the devil from uh, coming in. Okay, so uh, is, it, is it a question, Viku? I see your hand is raised. Okay, um, can't hear anything, maybe by mistake. Sure, we'll continue. Yeah, so this way we can resist. Uh, also, there are times when our resistance you know sometimes we stand our ground and it's done but sometimes we have to wrestle against the devil because he can be stubborn so we also have to wrestle you know wrestle it's it takes some time right like you're going back and forth you're using your energy you're trying to subdue the devil so sometimes defending ourselves from the devil can be like that we have to even wrestle it out um then quench all the fiery darts. We talked about that. Now coming to the uh, offensive, we said that we can use a certain, certain terms that were used in the ministry of Jesus. He rebuked the devil. He commanded, I command you, or I cast you out. So what happens when you speak these words with authority? You're exercising your authority. So let's imagine, you know, we have authority, but we never really tell the devil what to do. So the Satan has come, demons are coming, they're trying to, you know, mess with our family, mess with our finances. We just let it go. We never ever say, stop. Or we never ever say, uh, I rebuke you. I command you. We don't do that. What do you think will happen? 
can't hear. Yeah, it will continue. Basically, it will continue. We are letting the enemy um, continue his destruction. So instead of that, we must take authority. And for that, there are certain terms. I've explained this in the previous class. Um, we, we could cast the demons out. We can, dis we can say, OK, you are destroyed. So just in those words that we are speaking, what's happened? Authority is being released. By faith, when I release those words, authority is being released. And we can see uh, the work stop or remove. All right. Uh, now, let me just jump all the way to prayer and intercession. Prayer and intercession here, we said that uh, when we pray, prayer also is a weapon. In the armor of God, there are all those other parts. But towards the end of that armor of God description, he says, pray for all the saints with all kinds of prayer. Ephesians 6.18. Why did he talk about prayer? Because prayer also will protect us. It's part of the armor. So if I'm not a prayerful believer, then I am leaving some gaps for the enemy to work. So just, you know, as I go about my daily work, daily thing, I say, OK, God, I submit everything into your hands. I come, I confess my sins. You know, you just take your daily time with the Lord. You pray. There is a covering that comes just from that place of prayer. So prayer will also help us exercise our authority against the devil. So there are a few more things that will help us exercise our authority. And that's what I want to talk about. Now. Righteous actions, okay? righteous actions, they also are a way in which we can exercise our authority. And I'll explain you know, what I mean by that. So when the enemy is doing the wrong things, he is instigating people to do unrighteous deeds. When we do the right thing, it's like you're destroying the devil. For example, let's say you know, it's, a, it's a group setting. Uh, and um, everyone is is speaking accusation and condemnation and um, you know curses on each other. You are also part of that group. Now, if you choose not to speak evil words, and instead of that, you speak words of blessing, you speak words of peace. You're going against the tide. Okay, so that's a way of righteous action. You're doing the right thing when everybody else is doing the wrong thing. What happens? The enemy is defeated just by that because he's not able to get you to react. He's not able to get you to do the wrong thing. So even righteous actions, what do they do? They help us overcome the devil. Now, take for example, in a um, let's say there is a region and there is a stronghold of corruption. When it comes to money, people are bribing, people are extorting, people are doing all kinds of evil things, right? trading in the wrong way. But in that setup, if you are the person who is dealing righteously with money, what will happen? It's like a weapon against the devil. We may not fully understand how we are attacking the devil, but we are actually doing it. Because you are that righteous person in that setting, and your right actions will will um, it'll thwart or it'll destroy the works of the devil. Okay. Because why are you doing that? You're doing it by faith, knowing that God is ultimately your rewarder. So righteous actions, doing the right thing when the wrong things are going on, even that gives us protection. So imagine when people, if we are living in a community where people are very selfish, people are very, um, you know, uh, um, like, they are covetous. They want to take. They want to take what is others. If you are a generous Christian, you are a kind Christian. Something about the kingdom of the enemy is being broken with just that. You understand? You're going opposite to the darkness. You because we are the light. So if darkness is unrighteousness, um, corruption, wickedness, condemnation, whatever it is. When you do 
light, generosity, kindness, you know, um, uh, integrity, things like that. We can overcome the power of the enemy. Uh, now, even at times when things have gone wrong, right? Uh, in some some testimonies or um, uh, you know some stories in the history, you might have read about this. Like I've read about. Uh, regions where there was racial disharmony, like people of one skin color, they don't like people of another skin color. So many things have happened you know, because of uh, racism. But uh, even in such, because of these things, what happened is the generations came later, the big generations, they did an act of restitution. What is that? So they went back to the people who were, who were uh, ill-treated. Just representative, representative of uh, a race that ill-treated another race. They just go and they say, "We are so sorry this happened to you. Uh, you know, and from now onwards, we do not want such things to happen. This is not a godly thing." Or they make restitution. They ask for forgiveness. It's an action, but it's an act of faith. It's an act that destroys a stronghold. You understand? So even acts like this that have been done overcome past mistakes have broken the power of Satan over communities. Let's say, for example, if women have been ill-treated in a, in, a, in a region and a lot of evils uh, have happened to women, but once believers recognize, hey, what has happened is not good, they go back, they seek forgiveness, they try to set it right, something powerful happens. Righteousness is stored. Okay. So even when a believer is walking in righteousness, we will be able to overcome the devil. That's another way in which we are actually exercising our authority. Remember, breastplate of righteousness. So just want to encourage us to follow this. And uh, uh, truly, you know, we, we will see our authority established. Now coming to the next part here, this is power of agreement. Power of agreement, we have discussed this during the course on prayer and intercession. Well, the Bible says that when we agree together in prayer, right, so that one oneness of mind regarding a particular matter will bring a breakthrough. So that's why when you look at uh, the book of Acts, what is nice about that group? They were in one accord, it says, right? They were in oneness of heart. Oneness of heart. So oneness of heart, when we pray like that, you know, in togetherness, uh, we can release authority. And things actually happen. Uh, so in our individual settings, we know, like two of us, we may pray about, you know, somebody's family matter or somebody's financial situation. Um, and that's okay. But when it comes to larger things, let's say we are praying for the city, okay, or we are praying for the nation, how to use this power of agreement? If, let's say, the pastors of the city come, okay, and they are in agreement that our cities should be saved, many people should come to know Christ in our city, or certain sins which are happening, crimes which are happening, they should not happen. They agree and pray, that is so powerful. So corporately, we can leverage. So pastors praying together. How about churches praying together? I know in some cities, such events have happened. At least in my uh, growing up years, I have seen that. Even in Bangalore, I've seen when churches have come together, they've had corporate events like Many churches getting together in one uh, place, worshiping the Lord and breaking bread together. What is it? Corporately, we are in agreement, right? When you are in agreement in a corporate way, that is very powerful. So we should aim for that. I'm not just talking about doing group events. Event is one thing, you know, you can even have an event, but behind the scenes, there can be so much of disagreement among people. So it's not just 
physically coming together, it's oneness of heart. Okay? So that oneness of heart will destroy the works of the devil. So power of agreement is something which we can use, which we can work with. Even when Jesus sent disciples, how did he send them? How did he generally send them? How many? How many at a time? Yeah, two by two, right? Like you just send them, go in twos. But why in twos? Is it that an individual cannot minister? No. Even a single person, you can minister, but there is something about working together with another person, being together in prayer, right? Uh, so the power of agreement uh, is also key, and we must make sure that we use it. OK. Now, what if the opposite happens? If there is a lot of division in the church, in the family, do you think we can make prayer, effective prayers? No, it becomes an advantage for Satan. Now that these people are not in agreement, come on, let me try to do something. So uh, use agreement as a weapon against the devil. Now, what are some other things which will help us overcome the devil? Two more things. And I think I will just stop with that today. OK, so the next one is uh, angelic assistance, angelic assistance. We can pray and ask God for the involvement of angels in our ministry. And angels we have seen in scripture, they were sent out as messengers. They were sent out as, uh, in Psalm 34, verse 7, it says, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. So they can act as guardians. Angels can also engage in um, uh, battle. They can engage in battle. We know that we, when Daniel prayed, uh, the angel went there, engaged in battle, and made sure that the prayers, are, the answer to the prayer actually came. We have other scriptures which are given here where even in a physical battle, angels came and they destroyed the enemy. So one thing we notice is, when we are fighting the demonic, right? God does send angels. So we can ask God. We can say, God, send your angels. Send your host of angels. Let them come and let them also uh, you know, serve. Now, when we are praying, when we are doing the ministry, when we are open to the work of the spirit, the supernatural, Sometimes, even without asking, God will send his angels. In the book of Acts, you see that. Um, I think Peter and John, they are captured. But what happens? They're actually supernaturally released. And uh, you know they are instructed, I think, by an angel. They are told that, OK, you go back to the same place and you teach over there. Later, you see Acts 12, you see that uh, Paul is Peter, Peter is put inside prison and he thinks he's having a dream. But actually, an angel comes out of the prison. Angel even takes him out of that place and you know allows him to be set free. So, why is all this happening? You know, when the people are open to the work of the spirit, open to the supernatural, all these things can happen. God sends angels. You will be surprised, you will be amazed that uh, you actually had an encounter with an angel. But these things can happen. So we can pray and we can say, God, you release your angels. Um, and even if there are demonic powers opposing us, let angels be released to fight. And usually, how do the angels start working? What do they need? What is their uh, input to start working? OK, if I tell an angel, OK, angel, you come. Uh, you help me clean the house. Do you think the angel will do it? Sure, huh? Yeah, I don't think so. So how do you engage an angel? Huh? Inviting. 
inviting. Okay. What else? How can you have an angel come and help find the powers of darkness? Okay, in the name of Jesus. Okay, right. <laughs> what else? What are the other? We want angels to help us. How are you get them going to get them to help you? That's the question. Hearing the word of God. If you are hearing the word of God. Declaring the word of God. OK, declaring the word of God. Um, so here in the chat, Nina says, through prayers. All right. So one is through prayer. Remember, Daniel prayed, angel came. So when we are praying, in the spiritual realm, it's like warfare. You don't even have to command or invite or ask. God will send the angels. They will engage. OK? So pray. It's amazing. You pray, and uh, angels will come. You know, angels are sent because you're praying. It's very powerful to understand that revelation. Now, the other way is, in Psalm 103, uh, please read this verse. Psalm 103, verse 20. Yeah. Okay. So, um, how do they how do they engage hearing his voice, isn't it? Who excel in strength, but then they heed to the voice of the Lord. So, angels respond to what God has said. Now, if I want to engage, you know, angelic um, assistance. I need to declare the word. That's what, what Prince was saying. If you say what God has said, then angels can start working. That's how they work. They only respond to the command or the word of God. And that is another reason why declaration is so important. When we declare the word of God, angels will get to work. Because that's what the word of God says. Right? Like, um, he will lead us in triumphant victory in Christ Jesus. He's quoting a script. That's what God's word says. And so, now angels can work towards my victory. Got it? So, in that manner, whenever we believe the word and we make declarations, that's the way in which you can have angelic assistance. One is prayer. Second is you declare the word of God. And this in this manner, you can overcome attacks from the evil one. Now, the final one here is authority gateways. Okay? So authority gateways is simply uh, going by the structure which God has created. So in the family, we know the God-appointed structure of Husband, wife, children. So the Bible says, you know, the husband is the head of the household. Okay. So when you follow the God given structure, even then you can overcome the devil. Because if we try to go any other way, let's say a child is trying to dictate all terms for a family, it doesn't work. There'll be a lot of confusion. But as per what the scripture says, the husband or the father is the head of the family. So you go according to that family structure or let's say church. church it could be the pastor. right? So when we keep the authority structure, it is then that we will again be able to overcome the evil one. Okay? Otherwise, when you 
then switch it around. Or let's say you're talking about um, the government, the state, or a community of people. The Bible says in Romans chapter 13 that we are supposed to honor government officials, leaders. There is an authority structure. You honor them, the Bible says. So uh, keeping the structure will also help us avoid the attacks that the enemy causes on us. Yeah, and the other point which is given here is that if, let's say, somebody is in a position of authority, for example, um, if I'm a pastor and I pray for the people who I oversee, I can exercise authority on their behalf. Okay, let's say a believer is not able to pray for deliverance themselves. When I go and pray, it will be very powerful. Similarly, we discussed this, you know, if there are parents, their prayers are the most powerful prayers over the children. So we can use our authority because this is the authority gateway. Through me, God's authority will flow to the people who have been entrusted to me. Now, what if me as an authority figure, okay, if I am, um, you know, into wrong things, just I'll just give one example. Let's imagine. Uh, I am. I have an office, and uh, I'm the boss. I have 50 people under me. Okay, and I have a weakness, and that weakness is for money. So I take bribes. Uh, I do all kinds of wrong dealings. That is my weakness as a boss, and I am the authority figure here. How is it going to affect the people under me? It's most likely that Satan will use the weakness of the leader to have a similar thing happening among all the employees. If the employee stands up against it, well and good. Otherwise, you'll find that the culture of that particular office is like that. If the boss is like that, everybody in the office is OK to take a bribe, you know, do corrupt things. Or Lust, let's say the head is like that, they are open to lustful, you know, things and all. People under them, obviously, they would have given them permission. Yeah, it's okay, nothing wrong, nothing wrong. So you'll find the same culture. So as an authority figure, for us to keep the debt out, if I am a leader, I have to make sure that I take care of all the loopholes. There should be no loopholes. Because if I allow loopholes in my life, it will affect the people whom I am taking care of. OK? So that's also how we can protect people whom God has entrusted to us. So those who are in authority, we must uh, ensure that we position ourselves in the right way. For those who are under authority, we must maintain a good relationship with the person who's leading us. So it might be a boss. It might be uh, you know, a manager. It might be our parents. right? We have to have a right relationship. What is right relationship? The Bible talks so much about it. You honor them. You um, uh, obey. right? You obey them. Uh, so whatever is the right form of submission, we follow that. Now, what if they tell us to do something ungodly? What do we do? OK, anyone online? What if the authority person in authority tells us to do something ungodly? How do you deal with it? You should not do it. OK. Yeah, you shouldn't do it. If it's ungodly, just don't do it, right? Uh, but how do you go about dealing with it? Uh, there are many things the Bible has to say. Right, so then you really have to apply your wisdom um, on how is it that you actually stand your ground and don't do the ungodly thing. You could always pray and uh, you know speak protection over yourself uh, and ask God's wisdom you know, not to get into uh, the so-called sins of 
those who may be leading us right sometimes it's unfortunate but these things happen we see the so called people who are supposed to be leaders or supposed to be mature but then they are making mistakes but as a person who is following how should i deal with it i can be careful not to do what they are doing right at least i can learn a lesson that oh this is not the way to lead and you protect yourself through prayer you make choices which are different from that particular individual who may currently be you know uh, heading up or leading so this is how a person who is in submission should actually protect themselves okay so uh, i'll stop with this for today i know we are just about halfway time yeah any questions uh mama uh, like we are talking about right if the person in authority mm. asks us uh, to do a uh, something that is not right yeah. and uh, at that time we have to use wisdom will we have to like say no but uh, like to escape or uh, to uh, to avoid uh, doing uh, what they are asking to do is it okay if we lie at that time in order to not to do it okay what if we lie to get escape is like can we lie so that we can't uh, think that they are asking to us yeah i don't think so since because it's like you two wrongs don't make a right you know as they say so they are asking you first of all something wrong and then you're doing also something wrong how can anything right come out of it yeah it's better to tell like okay i don't want to do it instead of telling i have some work lying in that way mm. see you can escape it without lying also and that thing wisdom wisdom no there's always a way out but what is that godly way out for that we have to pray and we have to ask god he will help us see when you when you read right if somebody in authority is telling us to do something that is outright ungodly for example in the book of acts they said don't preach in the name of jesus uh you know they, they basically they said stop worshiping the worshiping god peter and john say sorry we cannot do it they go against it they don't stop preaching in the name of jesus they continue doing the right thing okay so daniel you must uh, bow down and say no you can defy when there's something that's outright ungodly you know shadrach meshach abednego if you don't um worship you know uh, the the statue then we'll put you in fire okay put us in fire so they are defiant for certain things but it is the same paul who wrote romans chapter 13 where he says honor the government honor the leaders so we can ask paul what is this paul you know your people are not listening on one side and then you're saying honor your leaders so you see there is a place for everything if the instructions are such that you can accommodate it without making an ungodly um decision or action then yes okay but if they are asking you to do something which is making you go against god then you just say no i'm sorry i can't do that fine so any anything else regarding this yeah so uh, jackin is saying in the we we have to obey what god approves correct that's that's right so children obey uh, your parents in the lord right so we want to do what is right as per god and uh, that should be the desire of our hearts so when we walk in all these ways even righteous actions um the right authority structures prayer intercession uh, engaging leveraging angelic assistance and agreement will definitely help us overcome the enemy so in the next class uh, i'm going to move on to um, exercising authority
Fine. So uh, I, I'll see how it goes. Maybe we'll go to casting out demons and practical instructions on how exactly to do it. So hopefully, uh, we should be able to finish your portions a little sooner than the actual given date. OK? So if there are no more questions, let's wrap up. OK, there are no questions in the chat. Oh, one question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Ma'am, I've seen in uh, so certain families when it comes to praying for their children, mm. you know, uh, more than them praying themselves, they ask the pastor to pray for the children. Yeah. That uh, I've seen that, you know, like, uh, I mean, the pastor says that, you know, you should pray for your child. It's very important. More than us praying, it's very important that you pray for your child. And only it will be more eff effective, you know, suppose if it's, uh, depending on their studies or their behavior, they say it's better if you do it rather than us doing it. Yeah, the many many families have uh, I've seen that they already asked the pastor to uh, pray rather than they themselves praying and taking that time to pray for that child. Yeah, yeah. So maybe they don't know the importance of the parents praying. That's true. So all right, let's uh, close with a word of prayer. Could somebody lead us, please? Heavenly Father, thank you very much for leading us mightly in Nancy Hall's class to any Father. Thank you for helping us learn new things, any Father. Any Father, please help us to continue to learn more new things, any Father, in Nancy Hall's class, any Father. And uh, thank you, bless all those who have joined for this class, any Father. And uh, thank you for all done for us, any Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Uh, have a good week. We'll see you again in the next class this week. Thank you. Bye.